As America gears up for the 2024 presidential race, an unexpected face-off has emerged. Kamala Harris, a former prosecutor with a contentious record, against a multi-time convicted felon, former President Donald Trump. The stakes are high, and ironically, it's Harris's past as a prosecutor that may be her biggest hurdle. In a political climate where criminal justice reform is crucial, Harris's record as a prosecutor is under intense scrutiny. Her journey from a progressive prosecutor to a potential presidential candidate is filled with decisions that continue to spark debate. Here's why her past actions might haunt her campaign. Kamala Harris often brands herself as a progressive prosecutor, but her record has drawn mixed reactions, particularly from the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Her tenure as California's Attorney General and San Francisco's District Attorney includes several actions and decisions that many progressives find troubling. As Attorney General, Kamala Harris opposed Assembly Bill 86, which would have mandated her office to independently investigate deadly police shootings. This decision came at a time when police violence was a significant issue, especially following high-profile cases such as the shooting of Stefan Clark in Sacramento. Clark, an unarmed black man, was shot multiple times in his grandmother's backyard, sparking widespread protests and heightened demands for police accountability. Harris's opposition was rooted in her belief that local district attorneys should handle investigations, arguing that state-level oversight could undermine local control. Critics contended that local district attorneys often have close working relationships with law enforcement, leading to conflicts of interest and insufficient accountability. Often, local control means prosecutors covering up police misconduct cases. Harris championed a controversial truancy law during her tenure as San Francisco District Attorney, which later influenced state legislation when she became Attorney General. The law, introduced in 2010, aimed to combat chronic absenteeism in schools by imposing penalties on parents of truant children, including the imposition of jail sentences. Critics argue that this law disproportionately affected low-income and minority families, criminalizing parents instead of addressing systemic issues. While Harris personally opposed the death penalty, her actions as California's Attorney General reflected a complex and often contentious dual stance. She made a campaign promise not to seek the death penalty, and upheld this stance as San Francisco District Attorney, even in high-profile cases like the 2004 murder of a police officer. However, as Attorney General, she defended the state's use of the death penalty in court, arguing her duty was to uphold existing laws. This dual stance created a perception of inconsistency and pragmatism over principle, drawing criticism from progressives. Although Harris eventually supported marijuana legalization, her initial reluctance to fully endorse it during her early tenure as California's Attorney General drew significant criticism. Despite her progressive back-on-track program aimed at rehabilitating non-violent drug offenders, her cautious stance on marijuana legalization appeared contradictory to many observers and led to the jailing of scores of people on marijuana charges in California. It wasn't until much later, as public opinion shifted significantly, that Harris openly supported decriminalization and expungement of marijuana-related convictions. One of the most controversial aspects of Harris's record was her office's resistance to reducing California's prison overcrowding. Following a 2011 Supreme Court ruling mandating California to address unconstitutional prison overcrowding, Harris's office argued against the early release of non-violent offenders, citing the need for the state to use the inmates for labor to fight wildfires. This stance was criticized as being callous, exploiting prison labor, and prioritizing it over inmates' rights and well-being. As California's Attorney General, Harris mandated body cameras for agents of the California Department of Justice in 2015. However, she opposed a statewide bill that would have required all law enforcement officers in California to wear body cameras. 
Harris argued that such mandates should be decided by local jurisdictions rather than imposed at the state level. This position was seen as a reluctance to adopt broader reforms aimed at increasing police accountability, disappointing many progressives who were advocating for systemic changes in policing practices. Analyzing the Biden-Harris record on criminal justice reform isn't hard. In fact, one of the administration's first acts was to roll back key criminal justice reform executive orders signed by President Trump. Among these was Executive Order 13980, which required agencies to specify the criminal intent needed for regulatory violations. The order was supported by a diverse group of criminal justice reform advocates, including the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, the American Civil Liberties Union and the Charles Koch Foundation. They praised it as a significant step toward clearer and fairer regulations. However, the Biden-Harris administration rescinded this order early in his presidency, causing concern among reform advocates. Critics argue that this move, part of a broader effort to reverse Trump-era policies, disregarded important reforms that had bipartisan backing. This decision, coupled with Kamala Harris's prosecutorial history, places the Biden-Harris administration's commitment to criminal justice reform under scrutiny. As the 2024 presidential race heats up, their past and present actions will likely be pivotal points of debate. As Kamala Harris steps into the presidential race with Biden's endorsement, her prosecutorial record and the administration's stance on criminal justice reform will undoubtedly be focal points of debate. In an era where criminal justice reform is a critical issue, past decisions and policies will be scrutinized. While Harris brings extensive experience and a track record of pragmatic governance, reconciling her past actions and the administration's recent decisions with the progressive values of many Democratic voters will be a key challenge in her campaign. In the end, Harris's ability to bridge the gap between her prosecutorial past and her potential presidency will likely impact her success in the 2024 presidential race. To stay up to date on the latest about the drama that has become the 2024 United States elections, subscribe to Breaking Through News on the Newsbreak app or at breakingthrough.com.